Welcome once again to 12 Inch Richard, the man who gives you a name prattling and comments that are only meant for himself. Dr. Allen, whose first name is Ann, and who is the second name of Dewey's, of multi-level marketing fame, or infamy, depending on how you feel about that type of business, and Boratia Coffee are the subjects of my scrutiny today. To be completely upfront, I'd like to tell you that I don't know Dr. Allen, nor am I a doctor of any type. I don't have a PhD, an MD, or even a master's degree, but I also won't fill you with a lot of BS either. What I do have is an inquisitive mind and a penchant for research, as well as a fair amount of logic. With that being said, I'll begin. Mrs. Allen claims to be a board-certified doctor of naturopathy, or for folks who like initials, an ND. While I know several NDs, PhDs, MDs, DCs, ODs, etc. ad nauseum, I've always been able to find out where they obtained their degree from. Unfortunately, I can't find the higher education institution that supposedly awarded Mrs. Allen with her advanced degree. Now, I want to state up front that I have no doubt that Mrs. Allen does have a doctorate. I don't think anyone, least of all me, would accuse her of actually lying about such a thing. However, lest the fact that I, or anyone else, have actually talked to or read what they've written cannot find out where this lady got her education, I think that we should all calm down and rest in the fact that her own website states that she is, quote, known in the industry as the alpha scientist, end quote. That sounds pretty impressive until you ask the following two questions. One, what industry is this statement talking about? And two, who was the alpha scientist before Mrs. Allen came around and took away the title from them? Do a simple internet search on the term alpha scientist and do you know what you'll find besides a link or two that eventually takes you back to Mrs. Allen? Nothing. Well, nothing unless you consider the statement that, quote, I am a physician, double board certified in emergency and integrative medicine. The only place I have ever heard the use of the phrase alpha scientist is in regards to Anne Dewey's Allen, end quote. And, quote, the term alpha scientist sounds quite impressive, but appears to be a designation reserved just for this gal. With a huge list of apparent accomplishments, she has no published articles in any peer-reviewed scientific or medical journal. Surely, an alpha scientist would be one of those individuals whose public scientific work would be found somewhere credible." End quote. For now, until I can find out where it was that she obtained her ND, I'll call the doctor Mrs. Allen. Of course, I may be committing financial suicide since Mrs. Allen has at her beck and call a law firm that seems to sue any and everyone she deems appropriate to do so. This woman must be among the top one-half percent in the human populace as it concerns intelligence because among her many accolades it is inferred that she is a genetic engineer because she quote was able to genetically engineer a low glycemic delivery system for L-arginine specifically designed for the African-American community end quote. While this is certainly possible allow me to explain what it takes to become a genetic engineer. A 10-year plus two-year plus three-year educational pattern is normally mandated for anyone seeking a degree in genetic engineering. The first ten years refers to the number of years one spends in both elementary and secondary education. In other words, it requires you to have passed high school. No big feat here. The following two years refers to one obtaining the equivalent of an associate's degree, usually highlighting both math and biology. Again, no huge feat. However, it is the last three years that presents an issue in my mind because these years not only include math and biology, but also two genetics courses and three calculus courses that include integral and differential calculus before they are accepted into a genetic engineering course. Preferably, a person who seeks to become a genetic engineer has to have, as part of their undergraduate degree, high marks in both molecular biology or molecular genetics. Then you need to achieve a PhD, which requires several years of original research under the guidance of a supervisor and practical experience in recombinant DNA techniques. The reason I state that Mrs. Allen would have to be in the top one half percent of intelligent people is because she lists on her website that she has over 30 years of experience in medical clinical research, though she does not list anywhere on her site where this experience was gained and that she's been the director or chief researcher or science officer for the following nanoparticle science as it relates to the blood-brain barrier, orthomolecular science, and nutritional genomics. 
listing that she is or was the director of nanoparticle science, even though the company or university where she held this title is listed nowhere, would lead the reader, you and me, to believe that she had experience in chemistry, physics, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, and or material science, which are the listed requirements for a graduate minor in nanoparticle science and engineering from the University of Minnesota and similar qualifications for other major universities. However, I should state that not everyone who holds positions of high authority has qualifications in their respective fields. For example, President Barack Obama and the majority of those in the Senate and Congress who passed the Affordable Health Care and Protection Act are not qualified to speak authoritatively on the subject of health care. So, it could be that Mrs. Allen is simply a very bright manager who was promoted to lead a team of qualified scientists because of her people skills. Still, it would be great to know which company or university she worked with on nanoparticle science. The same set of questions arise about her qualifications in both orthomolecular science and nutritional genomics, including which companies or schools she worked with on these two disciplines and whether she concentrated on either nutrigenomics or nutrigenetics. As for Beresha and their clinical data references and bibliography, one must wonder why neither the research for Mrs. Allen or the Glycemic Research Institute is mentioned. In other words, one might assume that given Mrs. Allen's impressive list of credentials and research, as well as that of the Glycemic Research Institute, at least some of the research that went into the Beresha products would have come from them. That this might be expected should come as no surprise as Mrs. Allen supposedly holds patents in everything from thermogenic coffee, tea, water, cola, soda, a sports drink, lemonade, a chocolate drink, hot chocolate, green tea, and even human thermogenesis. With all the scientific achievements Mrs. Allen has to her name, especially with the thermogenic cola and soda, which according to everyone I've ever talked to, is exactly the same thing, I expected to see her research trumpeted far and wide, but no, it is not to be found anywhere on Borussia's site. As for the Glycemic Research Institute itself, it is a privately held corporation, which means that virtually no information is obtainable via general public inquiry, and it is not Better Business Bureau accredited, which might mean nothing more than a company that has, quote, over 30 years of glycemic expertise, end quote, has never bothered to register with the Better Business Bureau, or it might mean that the owner or owners of the Institute do not want prying eyes into who actually founded the business. As for me, it sure as hell looks like the Glycemic Research Institute and the doctor's own website under her own name was designed by the same company. This thought is compounded by the fact that a quick check of the who is listing shows that someone by the name of Dr. Allen is the administrator for both her website and that of the Glycemic Research Institutes and that the Nutrilab Corporation, whose website address is NutrilabUSA.com, all have the exact name server listed, four guys from Tampa, as of December 1st, 2013. Now, none of this is suspicious in and of itself, however, if one looks at the who is listing with even a passing glance of interest, you'll find 10 entries associated with Mrs. Allen's name. Whomever the four guys from Tampa are that run the name server by the same name, they are definitely kept quite busy by Mrs. Allen because the websites I have personally visited associated with her seem to be cookie cutter sites. Throughout Mrs. Allen's websites, of which she is at least the administrator and therefore should know what goes into them, it is claimed she holds patents for various products and has authored research papers. All of that sounds great, but it begs the questions, one, where are the patent numbers so that we, the consumer, can find out what the patents are for, and two, who peer-reviewed her papers? I can find zero, nada, zilchola, information on any of this. Also, her claim to have been nominated for a Nobel Prize is a completely safe claim since, according to the Norwegian Nobel Committee and the official website of the Nobel Prize, quote, 
the names of the nominees and other information about the nominations cannot be revealed until 50 years later. End quote. In other words, I could claim to have been nominated for a Nobel Prize and I'd be safe from prying eyes for the next 50 years. In fact, I was nominated for the Nobel Prize and will be nominated for the Nobel Prize for the next five straight years. If you don't believe I'm telling the truth, ask me this. Ask me about it and see if I'm not. Ha! Again, this could be sheer coincidence, but as it's been said, if it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck, well, you get the picture. Okay, on to a review of their diet coffee. First, the cost of a 30-day supply of the coffee, creamer, and sugar substitute will run you around $150, which is about $5 a day for a cup of coffee. So it's almost equivalent to going to a gourmet coffee shop and getting a large cup of French vanilla coffee. To their credit, they claim that you should split this amount up into two cups of coffee so that you're only spending $2.50 for each cup of coffee, but still, it ends up being $5 a day, regardless. On to the claims of this miracle coffee. One statement simply says that the coffee, quote, will help you burn up to 800% more fat, all while you enjoy your morning, afternoon, or evening cup of coffee, end quote. While another states, quote, you can burn 800% more calories than while jogging, end quote. My question is this. What the hell do these statements even mean in real life? For instance, does it mean that at 170 pounds, if I jog for 11 minutes and cover one mile, that instead of burning 99 calories, I would instead burn 792 calories? Or, if I'm reading the paper and would normally burn only 40 calories after 30 minutes, that I'd burn 320 calories instead? If so, sign my ass up. I could drink dirt mixed with cat urine if it means this kind of results. However, since there are no examples given as to what this statement might actually mean, I'll chalk it up, at least temporarily, to mean that it's simply a marketing ploy. So, how did I come across Be Skinny Coffee? A friend of mine gave me several packets along with the literature. I'm not very overweight, but I'm always looking for a way to become fitter, and if I can sit around in my boxer shorts while the fat just melts, melts, melts away, and if the coffee tasted good enough, well, I decided to give it a shot. After reading the directions on the package, which said to brew the entire one-ounce package to make the recommended 24 ounces of coffee, which I was supposed to drink in two sittings at least four hours apart, I noticed that there was a hell of a lot more than one ounce of product in the bag. Again, I'm not a scientist, but the last time I checked, one ounce equals two tablespoons. So, I measured, and sure enough, there was three ounces in the bag that was labeled one ounce. Hell, I thought I'd struck the mother load and had gotten a package with three times the servings in it. Then I checked the other bags I'd been given and found that they all had the same amount of coffee. Just to be certain that I wasn't missing something, I called my friend and asked them about it. They said it was sold by weight, not by volume. Rolling my eyes, I got out my trusty food scale and weighed the stuff. Just like I thought, a lot more than one ounce. Oh well, maybe it was just all the extra caffeine, chromium, vitamin C, and ground up pieces of fruit that made up its proprietary blend that accounted for all the extra brown stuff in the package. I decided to go ahead and follow the instructions, and so I poured 24 ounces of water into my coffee pot poured the entire package into that, and waited about five minutes. Once it was done, I poured a cup of Be Skinny, waited a couple more minutes for it to cool down, and took a sip. Wow! I could not believe it! Have you ever heard the expression, that coffee is strong enough to get up and walk? Well, the Be Skinny coffee could have bench pressed a damn bus while running wind sprints. Seriously, this stuff was so strong and tasted so much like an old cup of Walmart brand instant coffee, it was ridiculous. Just to make certain I wasn't being super critical, I took the coffee cup to a co-worker and had her try it. She nearly gagged. Now, it's important to understand that I have zero to gain from you taking my word about the Be Skinny Coffee. I'm not part of any MLM, and I don't have stock in any coffee company. This is solely my opinion. I brewed a second pot of regular coffee so that I'd have something to compare it with. The regular stuff, even though I'd used three ounces of it, just like I had with the Be Skinny, tasted a lot better. Not just a little better, 
a lot better with a capital A L N B. I wasn't willing to give up, so I decided to dress up the fat burning coffee using the creamer that I've been given. Not only did I have to use an inordinate amount of the creamer, there's no way it would last 30 days if I had to use as much as I did the first time, but even when the first cup of coffee was chalk colored, it started tasting really yucky, which was an improvement on the plain black cup of coffee, but not by much. Then I tried to sweeten the coffee up using the natural fruit sweetener, and when I took a drink, I thought I was going to gag. To be completely fair, the natural fruit sweetener in and of itself is pretty damn good. And while it might be good on fruit, or maybe even in tea, I don't think it's up to speed when it comes to putting it in your coffee. I gave up trying to make the stuff taste better, and I simply chugged 12 ounces of the stuff down. It didn't taste very good, but I already knew that. What I didn't know is how fast the stuff was going to react. Maybe it was because I hadn't eaten anything when I drank the coffee, but whatever the reason, I felt so jittery it was ridiculous. I read the back of the package again and found out that even if every bit of caffeine in the coffee is listed on the back, it's damn near twice the amount that's in some of the most popular energy drinks. Did I get hungry as fast as I normally would have? Well, no and yes. No in that I was so friggin' jittery that I was afraid I would eat one of my own fingers if I tried to put anything into my mouth. Well, okay, that's an exaggeration, but you get my point. But yeah, I definitely ate more than I would have normally because I was trying to counter the jitteriness I felt. So, what's my overall experience with the Beast Skinny Coffee? I would never, ever drink this stuff on a regular basis. I'd rather go to Starbucks, spend my $5 on a decent cup of coffee, and risk being overweight. I might note that I've been a fairly heavy coffee drinker for nearly 30 years, and I'm not a walking blimp, or as Dr. Allen says, quote, as fat as a pig, end quote. The fact is, I exercise on a fairly regular basis, I watch what I eat, and I love coffee. I probably drink way more coffee than I should on a daily basis, but since I don't have a problem going to sleep, I simply don't worry about it. And the best things are, one, I'm not overweight, and two, I don't have to suffer through this stuff they call coffee to get skinnier. My final call on this one is a definite maybe leaning towards a great big no! If you like feeling as though you're going to crawl out of your own skin and drinking something akin to tar, this stuff is definitely for you. On the other hand, if you value your taste buds and you want something smoother than an energy drink followed by a caffeine tablet, I'd say stay away from this one. Also, if you happen to want something backed by scientists who had the schools they've attended and peer-reviewed studies listed, I wouldn't touch this one with a 10-foot pole. However, if you're just into the business to make money, and you can convince your buddies to spend an average of $5 a day on coffee they'll either end up throwing away or using as plant food, I'd say go for it. Either way, this is simply my opinion. Take it or leave it. It doesn't matter at all to me. Join me, 12 Inch Richard, next time for more inane prattling, inappropriate comments, and the truth that no one but me wants to hear.